That's my, that's my bitch, that's my bitch Please don't get offended if I say, if I say What's up, what's up, what's up? It's old ass T and you already know the vibes. If you don't, you are about to. Welcome to my channel where I talk about a little bit of this and I talk about a little bit of that. Now, if you are an avid watcher, you already know the vibes, but if you don't, you should know that before we get into the tea of the week, we always gotta get to the songs of the week. Now, going at number one, we got Peach Snapple by Kerr. Now, I'm gonna be real with you, I just found this song, artist, aesthetic, three days ago. If I'm being honest, what really got me to connect with it was the lyrics. Like, once he started talking about his grandmother, like, come on, man. Y'all already know people from the hood, they don't play about their grandmother like on some real stuff. Shout out to the grandmothers out there doing their thing and throbbing. Now going at number two, we got 11 p.m. in London by J.I. the Prince of New York. Now I'ma be real, J.I., I've been I've been paying attention to him since the rap game. That's another person just like Flaw J. And I must be real, this song is fire. I haven't really tapped into J.I. like I really was like when I was in college. I'm telling you, like there were certain artists I really was doing their thing back when I was in college, like Coyle Ray, Tekka, those people, depending on how consistent they are, they was lit back then and they still lit now. I, I give my props where it's due. But J.I., this song just reminds us of all the times that we was out here vibing, listening to this song, when we was on campus, doing our thing, or even if you wasn't on campus, I'm pretty sure half the people that really was still listening to J.I. was either in high school, college, or was just young, figuring out their life. And I feel like that's what makes makes J.I. relatable to the people that listen to him. He was also just young and figuring life as well. This is the only thing I hate about living in New York City. Like, is this really necessary? First it was the helicopter, now y'all bugging, doing all this extra stuff. Like, come on, bro. Y'all y'all really taking it a little too much. And real talk, if I can hear your siren from all the way over here, thinking about what the criminal was thinking. If I can hear that all the way from here, I'm fleeing. I'm fleeing. So in what world would y'all think that it being loud would help y'all get to the criminal faster? I don't understand that. But let's get back to the topic. And let's get to number three on the songs of the way. Going at number three, we got Pints and Grams by Lil Darius. Now, I'm gonna be real, when I first heard the word Lil Darius, it just reminded me of the meme of everybody talking about, oh, everybody saying Lil next to everything, Lil Dirk, Lil Baby, Lil Mama, like everybody got Lil in front of their name. So I thought that was kind of, you know, funny at first. But when I gave this song a try, I'm gonna be real with you. I like motivating music, and that, that's why I really think that a lot of the songs that's been coming out, a lot of people can't relate to. A lot of people are on the grind. A lot of people is trying to get up there, whether it's in rap, whether it's in media, whether it's in sports, whether it's in life. In all ways, shapes, and forms, everybody is grinding. People want to listen to music that they can relate to. Every song that most of these rappers come out with when they make it up there is, oh, I'm flexing, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. Only a small few group of people can relate to that because they're not flexing, like how you name it. You could rap about that, but also rap about how you made it from nothing. Rap about how you came up. Rap about your struggles and how you still push through because that's something that a lot of people can relate to. And that's why Lil Darius is on this list, <laughs> so truth be told. All right, y'all, that was all for the Songs of the Week list. Now let's get into the tea of the week. For the first topic, we are talking about Stephen A. Smith, and I'm gonna be real with you, he been moving wild, mixy. Last video, I was talking about how he was blacking on Monica McNutt, and now, He's out here blacking on Andrea Carter and Shania Gumake. Now, if you're not caught up, I advise you to go and watch my last video. I'm not going to give you no summary when I can literally tell you to go to a video from the past that supports me. But, I'm kind enough to not sit there and leave you hanging. Basically, the conversation of the first two topics is the WNBA. A lot of people and the media and i will be making a separate video very very soon but ever since the olympics have announced their women's basketball team it's like the internet is in an uproar all of a sudden everybody is forgetting about stats but i thought stats mattered <laughs> stephen a and shannon talk too much sharp decided to take it upon themselves to say at the gold medals at winning let's just put her in there because of popularity andrea I strongly suggest you rethink such positions, especially when it comes to you, because marketing matters. It's how you get paid. 
if you don't know that, you better hear me and hear me good. I am telling you right now, you are going to be underpaid for the rest of what I consider, what I believe will be an illustrious career unless you get your mind right about that marketing. It matters. It matters. Janae, you know I'm right. I hear you, Stephen A., but I will not sacrifice my basketball knowledge and my integrity in terms of the game for marketing. My marketing is doing just fine. I'm going to be real. My sisters. <laughs> these men could sit there and boldly be incorrect while you got to sit there and sit down and take what he's saying and not boldly tell the truth what part of what you guys represented what you guys say is wrong Stephen A if you took the time and, and, and this is coming from somebody who defended you during the Monica McNutt situation now granted I will give Stephen A his flowers because I have a plethora of videos that I can clip in here of him showing love to the WNBA, reporting on the WNBA. I'm not going to sit there and lie and pretend like he didn't do that last year, but two things can be true at the same time. And to see you act the way you acted, not giving them space to defend themselves, interrupting, I don't care nothing about that. Because one thing you cannot argue against, one thing you cannot fight against is facts. I could put up the rankings right now and we can look where Caitlin Clark is at. Majority of the people on the team, she is not above. It's some people that didn't even make the team that she's not above. And y'all got the audacity to sit there and berate them. <laughs> Draymond Green said it best. When I say this is the new media, we do this differently. You're right, I'm happy you admitted it, real media. But the new media is here to stay, and we're taking this thing over. You know why? Because people don't want to hear that old, dried up, tired stuff that you're talking about. Nobody want to hear that no more. The new media, baby. Don't nobody want to hear all that tired stuff you're talking about anymore. Old media is dying. And I really hate to see this because Stephen A had spoken about the WNBA in the past. I just don't understand why now he's joining the, the bandwagon on some real like I'm disappointed not only did he sit here and disappoint me with this but he disappointed me with reporting that the black community should shun Will Smith for slapping Chris Rock when we use the word forgivable or forgiveness that's for Chris Rock to deal with this is his call could have had the man arrested that night and assisted to the LAPD that not be the case could have pressed charges thereafter and insisted on not doing that to Will Smith. Chris Rock will never get over that, ever. I'm not saying he even has to apologize. I'm saying that while I watch him and Martin Lawrence promoting this movie, black folks have loved and revered this man for decades. Everybody makes a mistake. This is not hatred. I love Will Smith still, but you got to have a conversation. When you're apologizing and when you get getting emotional and when you're thinking about all the lives or the people that you've affected, it's primarily us as black people who have loved and supported you and watched you go on a national, on an international stage and slap one of us in the face. We know you wouldn't have smacked Ricky Gervais. Bill Maher, Bill Burr, or a host of others. We know you wouldn't have done that. A lot of folks ain't get over to that. A lot of folks find it hard to just go to the movies to watch you. You sure about that? You sure about that? You sure about that? I don't know if I'll ever get over what Will Smith did to Chris Rock. But that doesn't mean I have to. Will Smith came out with emancipation a year later for Apple and all of that stuff. Will Smith was sensational in that movie. So was Antoine Fuqua. And that Will Slap cost Will Smith and Antoine Fuqua an Oscar. I was thinking about black folks everywhere aspiring to be in this business, aspiring to succeed. And my mind was, 
Hell, if he did that, what would the rest of us do? I'm very disappointed in that statement because you'd rather the black community uplift somebody who let white people say the N-word than somebody who defended his wife? Not only is this situation opening doors from the past about Will, but it's opening doors from the past about Chris Rock. You are the niggerest fucking white man <laughs> I have ever I don't think he, he could do that. Oh, uh, I don't think he has those There's qualities. There's only two, no, you don't even understand. Really? You don't, you don't really know him, like, I've worked with him. Like, anywhere. No, exactly. These two, these two. We say that. nigger on stage. On stage. <laughs> you guys don't. That's what, yeah. It's, it's yeah, that's the two difference. teams that's here. The difference <laughs> between, yeah. yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. We, we say nigger on stage, you guys ways, don't. But that's definitely a pairing. Who, who we says say nigger on stage? We don't. Well, you just did. Yeah. That's right. Uh, yeah. I'm you and me say no, nigger in private. No, no, no. These two guys don't. <laughs> These two guys don't. I don't believe he says it in private. I'm giving it up just because it's played. I don't believe it's played. Yeah. I don't think you've ever said it probably in your life. No, no. Like, no. Yeah, that's a, that's a big, huge difference between you and me, I think. Like, what? At the end of the day, he's going to defend his. I'd rather defend somebody who defended his wife in the name of marriage than somebody who defended somebody saying, <laughs> some white man, white men, saying the N-word. I don't, I don't understand that and I can't get down with that. So you missed me on two occasions. Very disappointed, Stephen A. You disappointed me. You disappointed me. Going on the next topic, we're gonna talk about streamer Ty Lil and Michael Rainey from Power going on stream and then sparking some controversy. I'm not really a Ty Lil fan. I don't really watch all his videos. But when I do watch some of his videos, most of the videos I can see are lit, vibey, just cool energy. And in the beginning of his stream with Michael, I'm gonna be real, this video was nothing less of that until his sister took it upon herself to put her hands on Michael and inappropriately touch him. <laughs> now I'm gonna be real, I thought that was disgusting because like let's be I'm I'm somebody who advocates for the children and I think it's real disgusting that you could even do all that in front of kids. I was watching Love After Lockup the other day and I seen this couple, she was excited to see her man after she ain't seen him in dumb long. They out here making out and kissing and smacking gums and moaning in each other's mouth like that's disgusting. Have some respect. So that, that that really taps into that. And I also think that it's interesting that a lot of people have made it their business to say, oh, if the roles was reversed, if it was the other way around, if this was a boy, respectfully, whether it's a woman, man, boy, girl, elephant, dog, cat, it's wrong. Like, we need to start having respect for other people at the end of the day. Like, even if you thought he was fine, there's no reason why you should have put your hands on his piece. That's disgusting. I would never touch no woman just because I think she fine. I want to be touching the door, you know what I'm going to that, I'm not going to sit there and do the, you know what I mean? Like, that's disrespectful. Whether it's a man or a woman, is wrong. He made his statement later on in the video. That shit really got me really feeling away because, bro, I be around celebrities all day. I do unusual shit. No, no, no homo. And nothing crazy. Like, I'll be like, yo, like, I'm trying to record the video, picture, whatever. But due time, you feel what I'm saying? That shit don't even matter to We all equal on the same. But she never seen somebody that cab caliber, so she start, you feel what I'm saying? And that's my sister, so like, I'm not gonna say nothing bad about it. I'm gonna just check and tell her, like, you don't gotta be on it. You're gonna say you're human. I got people telling me, you gotta be aware who you have around when these have you come. Why should I? I'm gonna be real. I don't think that Tyler was some mixy dude. I don't think it, his intentions was the, I don't even think he, his, his upbringing is ghetto, disrespectful people. But if I have to be honest, let this be a learning lesson for him to know who should and should not be around, especially when he's about to do stream. Last on the list, we got Megan Thee Stallion addressing some AI Torno with the letter P in the beginning. Now, Megan Thee Stallion had made a statement on social media, and I'm gonna read this to you. It's really sick how y'all go out the way to hurt me when you see me winning. Y'all going too far. 
just know today was your last day playing with me, and I mean it. Now, I'm gonna be real, I'm not a Megan Thee Stallion fan, but I've definitely seen fandoms beasting to try to sit there and disrespect somebody in the name of their favorite person, and I think that's real whack. The other day, I seen a Megan Thee Stallion fan responding and giving her opinion on a certain topic, and all everybody was talking about is how Megan Thee Stallion don't got her mom. Like, y'all think that's cool? You think that makes you a better person? You think your favorite person is gonna wanna interact with somebody that thinks that bullying is cool? Nobody wants to be associated with a bully. I don't play that at all. I don't I don't I don't want to associate with stuff like that. Real talk. I feel like whether you a Beyonce fan, Megan Thee Stallion fan, Selena Gomez fan, Ariana Grande fan, Taylor Swift fan, Aces fan, you shouldn't disrespect nobody in favor of your favorite person. And that's period point blank. I'm not a Megan Thee Stallion fan, the Meg. I hope your mental is okay, I hope you're doing okay, but that stuff is not cool, like, I don't condone no type of bullying. If you like your favorite, if you want to put stats against your, your favorite and other people, that's fine, but don't disrespect them because you like somebody else. At the end of the day, you not you don't get no cool points for that, period. Now that's all for the tea of the week, I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. I really put my heart and my soul into this. Shout out to the New York Lip, shout out to Hammy for doing her big one too. And it's leading in Double Double. Shout out to her, she doing her thing. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be on the lookout for the next one. Make sure you give this a big fat thumbs up and enjoy the rest of your day. Mwah. Mwah. I couldn't believe it. Soon as I bought my Cuban chain, she called me back. Soon as I ice up my wrist, she got attached.